the pattern size always equals to casting size plus minus allowance size. How to provide the allowance for this one? We will go for detailed study of temperature of the pouring with the solidification of liquid, then solidification of salt. The molten metal is poured at temperature that is called as pouring temperature. So, pouring temperature is normally more than melting temperature by 200 to 300 degrees Celsius that is called as superheat. So, we have melting point plus extra 200 to 300 degrees Celsius. So, this one is somewhere is our pouring temperature and melting point is somewhere here. So, from melting as the time will increase, uh, temperature will get reduced. So, from point A to point B, your phase is what? Liquid phase. Phase change is there or phase is remain same? Phase is remain same. So, first temperature drop is from pouring temperature to melting temperature that is also called as freezing temperature. During this, we have a sensible heat loss. So, Q A B, Q for heat now, Q for heat according to thermodynamics, Q is discharge for fluid mechanics. So, I am using Q, Q for heat. So, what is the heat loss here? Uh, heat loss is, uh, this one is phase change or no phase change? No phase change. Normally, Q is given by, is normally given by MCP dt and second time it is given by M multiplied by dh, okay. Whereas there is a phase change, we cannot define Cp. For phase change process, we cannot define Cp. So, this definition you should not use, use for phase change. But you can very well define enthalpy, whether phase change or no phase change. But you cannot use this equation for phase change process. Phase change from liquid to solid. But now there is no phase change, so I can use this formula. So, this one is mass m multiplied by Cp. Cp of what? Liquid state. So, I have to use liquid state. From what temperature? the pouring temperature minus the melting point. So, on this graph of temperature versus, uh, so I will just interchange this. So, we have at point A pouring temperature, at, at point B we have melting temperature. So, is the volume has been decreased from Va and this one is what? Vb. So, this one is Vb volume and this one is, so process is from A to B. So, is it the vol specific volume is decreased? So, this one is called as liquid shrinkage, liquid shrinkage. Then we have a phase change process. So, we have phase change process from this point to this point. Let us say B to C. So, there is a phase change. So, during phase change is the value of Cp is not defined. The value of Cp is not defined. So, you have to go for M into dh. So, integral of dh. And for liquid, we have a suffix equals to what? F. And for solid, suffix is what? I. And for gases, suffix is what? G. So, using this equation, I can write this as M. What is the integral of dh? H. So, it is HIF. This is called as latent heat of fusion. In this case also, we have further decrease in volume from B to C. So, volume at C is further reduced. This one is what? Is it a shrinkage during solidification? B to C is this phase change. So, this one is shrinkage during phase change. So, at this point we have a liquid and at this point now we have a solid state. So, from A to C total heat required is this much. This heat is removed. Now, this compensation is done by what? Riser. This entire uh, whatever the shrinkage is there here, two shrinkage. One is called as liquid shrink and the shrinkage due to was phase change. This is compensated by riser. So, this one is compensated by riser. Riser is design. Riser is design to compensate shrinkage during liquid phase or during liquid and phase change process. So, no allowance is provided for A to C. Allowance are only provided after this phase. Now, we have a solid. We have melting point now that is called as freezing point. So, it will get cooled down to room temperature. So, this one is room temperature point equals to T. So, this one is room temperature and during the room temperature, the volume is further reduced up to point D. So, this one is solid phase. Is it a single phase or multi phase? Single phase. So, this one is, if it is a single phase, it is called as sensible and if it is a phase change two phase, it is called as latent. So, during this one, we can use MCP dt. So, we have M into Cp. Is it Cp of solid multiplied by temperature of melting point minus room temperature. So, this much heat has to be removed or this much heat is to be supplied to get the molten metal. This one is compensated by pattern allowance. So, only this portion is compensated by pattern allowance that is the shrinkage allowance. 
required to cool from point A to point C. The time required to cool from point A to point C is called as total solidification time. In short, it is written as TST. From B to C, it is called as local solidification time. This one is called as local solidification time. We are not interested in local. We are interested in total solidification time, which was calculated by using Carnivore's rule. Now, suppose I have this percentage equal to 7 percent, this percentage equal to 4 percent. I will make it 5 now. Now, 5 plus 4 is what? 9 percent. So, this one is riser compensation and 7 percent compensation is done by pattern that is shrinkage allowance. If you are not using the riser, if you are not using the riser, entire compensation you have to do by what? Pattern allowances shrinkage allowance. The shrinkage allowance is normally provided according to the length. So, for cast steel, the shrinkage allowance is 10 mm per meter. If casting is 1 meter length, then the shrinkage provided is what? 10 mm. For plain carbon steel, this value is 20 mm per meter. Then for brass and aluminum, this one is 15 mm per and for zinc, and lead is 25 mm per meter. So, normally they will ask you which material require largest type of shrinkage allowance. Suppose cho choice is all these four, then your answer will be what? Zinc. And suppose they will ask you the question like this that they will give these three choice, okay? They will remove this choice and this choice become none of this or any other metal. Then what is your answer? Is it a plain carbon steel? Shrinkage allowance you must remember. Highest for what? Zinc lead. Next is for plain carbon. Next is what? Brass and aluminum. And the list is for cast steel. On multiple choice zinc is not there, then the highest will become plain carbon. The plain carbon steel requires largest size of riser. So, what we are assuming is that there is no zinc and lead. So, we are not including this in our list. So, out of this three, plain carbon steel requires largest size of riser. So, this is the objective question they can ask you, which, which material required the largest size of riser? So, one which shrink very large, will it require larger size of riser? Shrinkage allowance is added to both internal and external dimensions. This allowance is applied when the temperature of the solid phase, now check your diagram, is this compensation is done from solid, only for solid phase from melting point to what? Room temperature. So, when the temperature of solid phase drops from freezing temperature, freezing is also called as melting temperature. So, this one is freezing temperature or melting temperature to room temperature. And the most important is except grey cast iron, all materials will contract during shrinkage. So, allowance is added, hence allowance is added to casting size. Whereas, grey cast iron will expand during shrinkage. Therefore, allowance, negative allowance or we can say allowance is subtracted is provided. So, in machining allowance, we are providing the extra material. Normally, in the case of cast iron, this value is around 2 mm. For this one is 10 mm, now it become only 2 mm for machining, not very large. For cast steel, 3 to 4 mm. And for aluminum and brass, do not remember this value. You just remember which one is minimum and which one is maximum, right? Distortion allowance is normally provided for thin sections having long leg and in U shape like this one. Normally what happens in machining allowances, ferrous and non-ferrous, we have two types of material. Now for one material, the pouring temperature is very high. If the pouring temperature is very high, temperature is very high, if the shrinkage is large, if the pouring temperature is less, the shrinkage will also less. According to that, the value will be adjusted in the final case also. So, for machining of a ferrous and non-ferrous, what matters is what? Pouring temperature. So, right. In case of ferrous metal, pouring temperature is more as compared to non-ferrous and hence more shrinkage in case of ferrous metal. Therefore, the machining allowance will be more for ferrous material as compared to non-ferrous material.
pattern is required for the manufacture hollow cylindrical casting in a steel indicating the allowance provided. The cylinder size after machining is OD equal to 150 mm, ID equal to 100, length equal to 150. The shrinkage allowance is 1 by 50, machining allowances on each face what is the length of pattern. So, we have given the dimensions of the casting, we have to find out the dimensions of the pattern and the allowances are also given. Shrinkage allowance is given as 150 and machining allowance is given as 2 mm. So, in this case we are given the OD equals to DO A is given as we are also given the 100 mm and we are given the length also. You can recall here in the problem length is given as 150. In the problem he has given allowance shrinkage allowance SA equals to 1 by 50. So, 1 by 50 will be approximately equals to 0.02 that equals to 2 per. I said the machining is going for machining one for one face, the allowance is given as 2 and since we are going for two faces, we have to add two times. Now, we want to find out the length of pattern only, that is why the length of pattern is there, that is why we are not interested in the diameter and the, both the diameters. Whenever you are given the machining allowance, whenever you are given both allowances, the uh, shrinkage allowances and machining allowances, so you always prefer, so when both are given, first find the machining allowance. First find the size of the job using machining allowance and second step whatever the size is coming after machining allowance you give the shrinkage allowance. So as far as our numerical is concerned we have given the length equals to 150. So after giving the machining allowance the new length will be equals to L dash will be L plus shrinkage is 2 mm so plus 2 mm plus 2 mm. L is given as 150 plus 2 plus 2 that equals to 4. So, in this case if we give for the machining allowance your job length should be equals to 4, 154 mm because 2 mm uh, machining allowance is provided. Now whenever you have to do the shrinkage allowance calculation you have to modify this dimension which are coming by the machining allowance using a, a percentage given equals to our 2 percent. So, for shrinkage allowance we have new dimension equals to L dash multiplied by 2 percent, 2 percent is 0 0.02. So, the original length was after machining allowance is 154 multiplied by 0 0.02. So, this answer will be equals to 3.08. So, these are the allowances and therefore, you have to modify the new length. So, I will say the final length will be equals to. So, the final length will be equals to L dash plus L double dash that is equals to the length after the machining allowance which is equals to 154 this total length plus 3.08. The total length will include around 157.08. So, this is the required length. A grey cast iron of 200 by 100 by 10 mm are to be cast in a sand modules. Shrinkage allowance for pattern making is 1 percent. The ratio of the volume of pattern to that of casting you have to find out. As it is known that the grey cast iron will expand during the solidification, we have to provide the negative allowance. So, the pattern size will be, the reduction is 1 percent, so 0.99 percent will be available. So, 200 multiplied by 0.99 multiplied by 100, that also reduced by 1 percent into 10 is also multiplied by 0.9. So, this answer will come out to be 200 multiplied by 100 multiplied by 10 multiplied by 0.99. Whereas, the casting size is 200 by 100 by 10. We want to find out the ratio of volume of pattern. So, ratio of volume of pattern to volume of casting. So, this value will be get cancelled and your answer is 0.99 cube. So, this answer come out to be 0.97. So, you have to decrease the volume of pattern because of expansion process. While cooling a cubical casting of side 40 mm, it undergoes 3 percent and 4 percent and 5 percent volume shrinkage during the solid, during the liquid phase state, phase transition and solid state respectively. The riser volume of the metal compensated. The riser is only compensated for liquid shrinkage and the phase transition. So, the answer will be equals to 3 percent plus 4 percent total is 7 percent. A cubical casting of 50 mm side undergoes a volumetric solidification, shrinkage and volumetric solid contraction of 4 percent and 6 percent and no riser is used. Assume uniform cooling in all direction the side of the cube after solidification and contraction is. So, initial volume of the cube is V1 equals to 50 cube. And there is a contraction of 4 percent and 6 percent. So, final volume will be 50 cube that was initial volume and 1 minus 0 0.04 that was the first contraction multiplied by 1 minus 0 0.06 that is the second contraction. So, this volume reduced and then further is reduced by 6 percent 
and let's say the a cube is the dimension of the final cube after solidification so if you solve this one you will get a equals to 48.27 mm